Welcome to Be Ye Lifted, the online worship service from King of Kings Lutheran Church in Ann Arbor. King of Kings is a congregation celebrating 50 years this year, and we are a community that is committed to justice, mercy, and inclusion. Today I am on the front lawn of our church with a few members who are here making signs of encouragement for the United States Postal Service and signs asking those who serve us in government to protect the United States P Postal Service. This is one way we live into our commitment to justice. Here's an example of the signs they are making by one of our members, Phil. And we'll be putting those along the road. This is a form of peaceful protest and I mention that in case you have been wanting to help in some way but are unable to attend a protest with many many people 
because of medical conditions. That a protest is simply when you draw attention to an issue that is unjust. And there are many, many peaceful ways to do it. So thank you for being with us today. You may want to have um, something to eat and something to drink. With you, because we have a time at the end of this, near the end of this worship, we call our holy meal. It is not exactly holy communion, uh, but we do take a time of prayer and those watching um, eat and drink something at that point. Uh, if you like Be Lifted, then please like us. Give us the thumbs up. Uh, if you subscribe, you will be notified of whenever we worship online. So thank you for being here. Come now, let us worship the Lord. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Good, holy, and most gracious God, we thank you for this glorious day, for this shady space, for these committed and faithful and flawed people here to hear your word, Pray for one another, work for justice, and find a way through your good news together. Amen. Where are my keys? I know I put them around here somewhere. Tiny Mouse, have you seen my keys? Giraffe? The keys to the lawn mower tractor. I can't mow the lawn unless I have the keys, but I can't find them. The grass is getting way too tall. 
It's a good thing you're not Jesus' friend Peter, then. What? What about Peter? Well, Jesus asked his friends who they thought he was. And Peter said Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. Then Jesus said he would give Peter the keys to heaven. Yes, he did. I don't think Peter would lose those keys. I wonder how big those keys would have to be. Hey, maybe your keys are in your other pocket. Oh yeah, here they are. That was very smart of you, Tiny Mouse. Well, thank you. I also read in a letter Paul wrote to his friends in Rome that we all have different gifts. Teaching, giving, leading, lots of things. Maybe my gift is to be a good finder. Maybe. I think your gift is that you are a good friend. Aww. The reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Here ends the reading. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came to the area of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And Jesus said, And what about you? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus replied, Happy are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because no human has shown this to you. Rather, my Father who is in heaven has shown you. I tell you that you are Peter, and I'll build my church on this rock. The gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Anything you fasten on earth will be fastened in heaven. Anything you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anybody that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to fully understand today's reading, we need to look a little bit at what happened just before this story. Last week, you may remember Jesus had an encounter with a Canaanite woman, a Canaanite woman who called Jesus to task for ignoring her, her for being willing to ignore her. And Jesus ended up owning what she said he had done and healed her, healed her daughter and thereby healed her. That's where we were last week. Between then and what you just heard, a whole bunch more people were healed. Large crowds came, those who were paralyzed, blind, injured, and unable to speak. They laid these people at Jesus' feet and he healed them. The crowd was amazed. The injured began to walk. The blind began to see. And right after that, Jesus fed 4,000 people again. A few weeks ago, we heard a different story in the Gospel of Matthew in which 5,000 were fed. There are two feedings in the Gospel of Matthew. And again, the disciples said, where are we going to get enough food? And Jesus supplied with, uh, supplied with seven loaves of bread and two fish, and all were fed. And then the Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus in order to test him. They asked him for a sign that he was who he said he was, that he was who his disciples claimed him to be. All of this took place before today's reading in which Jesus asks Peter, who do you say that I am? And context is really important because it is easy to look at today's reading to internalize it to ourselves and to say, who do you say that Jesus is? And you would probably say, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the one in whom we put our faith. The one who died on the cross and rose again three days later. Amen. This is our Jesus. And you might say that. But when you say that, knowing these things came earlier, you can see how this story is your story too. Because isn't it so that right now, there are people in need of healing everywhere? Isn't it true that right now, physicians and those with the gifts of healing are being filled with God's Holy Spirit to help people be healed, be made well, 
physical therapists helping people to walk again? And isn't it true that right now, common, ordinary human beings like you and I, including you and I, are feeding thousands with so little? Over here, we have a small uh, outdoor pantry. Uh, it's about the size of maybe six to ten normal mailboxes that you would find on your curb. And the people of this community of faith routinely keep it filled with food so that those who are hungry can come and get what they need even at midnight, even if they have to walk to get it. And this is certainly not just what we are doing. This is happening in churches, and in synagogues, and in temples. This is happening through community building programs. This is happening through programs that our military is conducting. The United States Postal Service has the single day largest food drive of any of these agencies. One day a year they ask us to put cans of food and boxes in our mailbox and they not only deliver our mail, but they pick up all this food for the hungry. They too are part of God's plan. And so what really is this story about today? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter says, <clears throat> you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replies, I tell you that you are Peter, and I'll build my church on this rock. Many people misunderstand what that means. It is true that it means that Peter, one of the first disciples, a flawed disciple, a faithful disciple, was the one to whom Jesus said, you are Peter, and on you I will build this rock. But it was bigger than that. What he was saying to, G to Peter that day is, on your confession that I am the Son of God, God will build the beloved community that is the church. The church has gone through many changes over the years. But in the last six months, the changes are coming so fast and furious, it makes us catch our breath. Who knew six months ago, I would be preaching to you on this lawn because we could not gather together inside this building. Churches, synagogues, temples across this nation are being repurposed for blood drives as we had this past week as we are having once a month. They're being repurposed for makeshift hospitals. They're being repurposed to help families feed their children. They're being repurposed to help schools extend their space so that they can teach with the children socially distanced so they don't get sick. The church right now is out in the world in ways we have never expected before. And while the church has always been doing this kind of work, let's face it, having a regular space to gather, to sing, to pray, to hear the word was pretty darn comfortable. And sometimes it made our presence in the world a little less apparent. This is good news today because it reminds us not just of who Jesus is, but of who we are. We are the church, the beloved community, founded by God through Jesus Christ and through Peter's confession. We are the church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. And that might be something you want to remind yourself of these days. I like this particular translation, the Common English Bible, because it says, the gates of the underworld will not prevail against the church. The underworld, 
the empire, those things that lead to death will not prevail against the confession of the church, which is Jesus Christ is Lord. And I think it's important to remember this, this beloved community called together by Jesus Christ, this beloved community includes us and Peter and all those who have gone before us saying Jesus Christ is Lord. It is our ancestors. It is our family, our friends, our mentors, our teachers. It is all those who also struggled through trying times, through, through times of war, through times of intense grief, through plagues, through pandemics, through rivalries in politics. It is all of those who are here now, who have gone before us, who have showed us the way by both their words and their actions. It is our ancestors that are also part of the beloved community.
following people have been elected by our congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. Kevin Foy, President. Helen Bogan, Vice President. Andrea Walchi, Secretary. Phil Macy, Treasurer. Deb Bond and Tim Graves, members at large. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gather us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation in this wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You have to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You have to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and a mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out, carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected. I will, I will and I, I ask God, God to, help to help me. I now... People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, from your individual homes, please read the words on your screen now. I now declare you installed as officers, council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of God. Amen. 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 Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Christ. Your Son, whom we confess as the living God, prepare your church for the mission of bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our song to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators, and magistrates, mayors, and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purpose in the governance of people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wellness to those who are bereaved in trouble or adversity or sick and in need of care, especially those on our long-term prayer list. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into the community of King of Kings in which we, through many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to add to our prayers today one simple prayer for Ella, one of uh, the children in this congregation who broke her arm this week and whose family has two other children, including a one-year-old. Let us pray. God, we pray that Ella's arm will heal well, that her cast will not make her arm too itchy, that she won't get overly frustrated trying to do things with her arm in a cast, and that her entire family will be filled with infinite patience during this time. Amen. At this time, let us each, from our separate homes, together, share the bread and drink that we have made ready for this moment. Holy means set apart. As we remember one another, we enact this ritual, a holy meal. <laughs> Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you. 
yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we close today, I want to mention that I just picked up the mail from the church's mailbox. And here's what we got today. We got a letter of thanks from the Hope Clinic um, for our cooperation with them. Um, for those that we have helped um, who are sick and we have made a financial donation and work cooperatively with Hope Clinic, who does a lot of good work in this area. We got a letter from Lord of Light Lutheran Campus Ministry from Reverend Elizabeth Friedman asking us um, to do a few things to help um, support the college students as they begin their classes this fall. We got um, a letter from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, of which we are a part. Um, talking to us about actions all of our churches will be taking in September as a part of God's work, our hands. The ELCA has nearly 10,000 churches in the United States. And I got a letter of encouragement from a colleague and friend of mine. We have been colleagues for over 20 years and attended seminary together. And she always, even though we have known each other informally. She always reminds me who I am by closing her letters this way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
rose and rise to bless you still. To marvel at beauty and glory in your ways and make a joyful duty our sacrifice of praise. Thanks be to God.